production is the key to the economic development of a country. Production can be agricultural, like cultivation of crops, or industrial, like manufacturing of goods. Over 70% of the population in India still lives in villages. People living in villages require various goods and services, many of which are produced locally. Thus, a village is a good place to understand various concepts related to production. We have chosen Palampur as the place to study production. Palampur could be in any part of India, from Jammu and Kashmir to Kerala, Gujarat or Assam. This imaginary place called Palampur represents a small village in India. Palampur is pretty well connected by road. A three-kilometer-long all-weather road connects Palampur to a bigger neighboring village called Raiganj. From Raiganj, the same road continues to the nearest town of Shahpur. If you travel on the road from Shahpur to Palampur, you will find an amazing mix of transport. Tongas, bullock carts, bogies, motorcycles, jeeps, trucks and tractors are all used to transport people and goods on this road. Palampur is a small village inhabited by about 450 families. As in most villages in India, people in Palampur belong to many different castes. The 80 upper caste families in Palampur have pakka houses made of brick and cement plaster. If you visit them, you will find that some of these houses are quite large. The Dalits account for about one third of the total population of Palampur. They live in a corner of the village in small houses made of mud and straw. Palampur is one of the increasing number of villages in India that have electricity. Most houses in Palampur have electricity connections. Electricity is also used to run tube wells in the fields and support local businesses. You may be surprised to know that in many villages in India, children walk several kilometers to reach their school. However, children in Palampur are lucky. Palampur has two primary schools and one high school where the children can study. The residents of Palampur also have access to good health care services. A government-run primary health care center and a private dispensary take care of the sick. So you see, Palampur is a pretty little village where people have good access to road connectivity, transport, education, electricity and health care services. Now let us take a look at the production activities that people in Palampur are engaged in. Like most villages in India, agriculture is the main occupation in Palampur. However, all farmers in Palampur are not equally fortunate. The 80 upper caste families own a majority of the cultivated land in Palampur. The other farmers either own small plots of land or are landless and work as laborers in the fields of the wealthy landowners. If you think all people in villages are farmers, you are not quite correct. Just like other villages in India, people in Palampur are engaged in several non-farming activities like shopkeeping, dairy, 
small scale manufacturing and transport services. All these production activities require natural resources like land and water, man made resources like raw material, human effort and intelligence, and of course, money. In the subsequent modules, we will see how these resources are used to produce goods and services in Palampur. We use a number of goods and services every day. All these goods and services, from the food we eat, to the clothes we wear, and the appliances we use, and services like the bank we have an account in, and the transport we use to travel, are made available to us through production. Suppose you have a great idea about making a product or service required by people. Before you can put your idea into action, you will need to consider the factors required for its production. Whether you want to produce a crop, set up an office, or build a factory, you will need some place to do so. Thus, the first requirement for production is land. Land as a production factor also includes other natural resources like water, forests, and minerals found in the Earth's crust. The second requirement for production is labor or workforce. These are the people who do the different tasks involved in production. As is clear from the pictures, some tasks require hard manual labor, while others require higher education and technical skills. A production activity needs certain inputs to produce an output in the form of the desired goods and services. The third requirement for production is the inputs required for the different stages of production. These inputs are called physical capital or simply capital. The most important factor here is the entrepreneur who is willing to risk his capital to start a production activity. Physical capital includes inputs like machinery and tools money and raw material required for production. Some inputs like the building of a factory and the tools and machinery installed in it can be repeatedly used for production year after year. They do not get used up in production. Such inputs are called fixed capital. Note that fixed capital can vary from a simple plow used by a farmer to a sophisticated laptop computer. Inputs like raw material and the money used for buying it, paying electricity bills and the wages of workers, etc., get used up in the production activity. These inputs are called working capital and are required every time the production activity takes place. Let us take the example of a potter to understand the difference between working capital and fixed capital. The potter uses money to buy clay. The potter uses the clay to make pots. Money and clay get used up in the production of pots. Hence, these are his working capital. However, the potter's wheel can be used again and again to make pots. It does not get used up in the production of pots. Thus, it is his fixed capital. The fourth requirement of production is human capital. Human capital is the knowledge and effort that is put in to arrange for the other factors like land, labor, and physical capital to start the production of goods or services. Thus, land, labor, physical capital, and human capital are the four requirements or factors of a production activity. As is the case in most Indian villages, the main production activity in Palampur 
is farming. Around 75% of the working population in Palampur is engaged in farming. These include farmers and farm laborers. The welfare of the farming community is directly dependent on farm production. The more the production, the happier the farmers and farm laborers. So, how do we increase farm production? Well, there are two ways of doing it. One way to increase farm production is to increase the land area under cultivation. The other way to increase farm production is to adopt methods that allow you to grow more crops on the same land. Let us explore both these possibilities. Let us start with the possibility of increasing the land resource for cultivation. Land is a limited resource. We require land not just to grow crops, but to build houses, industries, public spaces, schools and hospitals, etc. Thus, it is difficult to increase the land area under cultivation. The only way to increase land under cultivation is to convert wastelands into cultivable land. However, wasteland is also limited. So this method can only increase the farmland marginally. What is true for Palampur is largely true for the whole of India. Observe in this graph how total land under cultivation in India increased only marginally between 1950 and 1970. Between 1970 and 2000, the land area under cultivation remained unchanged. Note that the land area in the table is mentioned in million hectares. Hectare is the standard unit of measuring land area and is equal to the area of a square having a side of 100 meters. Thus, one hectare is equal to 10,000 square meters. Since we cannot substantially increase the land area under cultivation, let us see how we can grow more crops on the same land to increase farm production. You can grow more crops on the same land in two ways. You can either adopt multiple cropping or use modern farming methods. Let us discuss both these ways in detail. Let us start with multiple cropping. Farmers in Palampur grow Jawar and Bajra during the monsoon or Kharif season. These crops are used as cattle feed. After harvesting Jawar and Bajra, the farmers grow potato in their fields between October and December. After the potato harvest, the farmers sow wheat in the winter season, which they harvest before the monsoon the next year. A part of the land in Palampur is used to grow sugarcane that takes about a year to grow. Thus, in a period of one year, farmers in Palampur grow three crops on the same land. This method of growing two or more crops on the same land in a year is called multiple cropping. Farmers in Palampur can grow multiple crops in a year because they are not dependent on rains for irrigation. They have access to electric powered tube wells to irrigate their fields. All villages in India are not as fortunate as Palampur. Less than 40% of the cultivated area in India is irrigated and is primarily in the northern and coastal plains. In regions like the Deccan Plateau, farmers are still largely dependent on rainfall for cultivation. Now let us learn about modern farming methods to increase farm production and how these methods are different from traditional methods of cultivation. Before we proceed, let us understand how farm production is measured. Farm production is measured as yield, which is the total quantity of crop produced on a piece of land in one year. Till the 1960s, crops were grown using traditional seeds that required less irrigation and grew well with natural manure made from cattle dung. Traditional farming is less expensive 
as the farmer does not have to buy too many things, but it produces a lower yield of crop. The Green Revolution in the 1960s introduced modern farming methods that used high-yielding varieties, or HYV, of seeds that required a lot of water and the application of chemical fertilizers and pesticides. Modern farming is more expensive as the farmer has to purchase HYV seeds, fertilizers and pesticides and also has to pay for electricity and for the installation of tube wells for irrigation. However, the crop yield is very high as compared to traditional farming. With increasing yield, big farmers invested in farm machinery like tractors and harvesters. These machines speeded up the work but increased the farmer's expenditure on fuel and maintenance. The high yield seeds used in modern farming produce more grain on each plant as compared to traditional seeds. This is how farmers get a higher yield through modern farming. Farmers in Punjab, Haryana and western Uttar Pradesh were the first to adopt modern farming methods in India and their yield got more than doubled. The green revolution in India was more successful for some crops than the others. This chart clearly shows that while wheat production in India has increased manifold, the production of pulses has not changed much. Of late, People have started associating several adverse environmental and economic effects with modern farming methods. Let us take a look at them. Prolonged use of large quantities of chemical fertilizers and pesticides kills useful bacteria in the soil, leading to soil degradation and a decrease in the natural fertility of soil. Chemical fertilizers and pesticides percolate through the ground to pollute the precious groundwater resources. Excessive use of groundwater for irrigation through tube wells has reduced the water table in many areas. With decreasing soil fertility, farmers are forced to use more and more fertilizers to maintain their production levels. This is increasing the cost of production for farmers and decreasing their income. Thus, we need to adopt modern farming methods with care for sustainable farm production. We have discussed multiple cropping and modern farming as two ways to increase farm production. However, farm production also depends on how much land a farmer has. Let us see how cultivable land is divided amongst farmers in Palampur. Around one-third of the families in Palampur are landless. Here is an aerial view of the farms in Palampur. Observe that there are a large number of small fields and a few large ones. Over 50% of the farmers who own land cultivate small fields less than 2 hectares in area. These farmers find it difficult to produce surplus crops that they can sell in the market. The large fields that comprise a major portion of the cultivable land in Palampur are owned by a small group of families. Some of them have fields in excess of 10 hectares in size. The situation in Palampur reflects the general situation of land division across India as shown by these figures. Across India, 80% of the farmers are small farmers who cultivate only 36% of the total cultivable land in the country. In comparison, 20% of medium and large farmers own 64% of the total cultivable land in India. Division of land through succession and inheritance is another reason for many farmers having smaller fields. Take the example of Sujan Singh. He owned a field of 5 hectares in size. Sujan Singh produced enough on his land to live a comfortable life. Sujan Singh had four sons, Hari, Sham, Sundar and Bhola. After Sujan Singh's death, his land was equally divided between his four sons. Thus, Hari, Sham, 
Sundar and Bhola each got a field just 1.25 hectares in size. Today, none of them can sustain their family with such a small field to cultivate. Farming requires hard work. Thus, after land, labor is the most important requirement for cultivation. Small farmers work in their own fields with the help of their families. Medium and large farmers hire landless workers or small farmers to work in their fields in exchange for small wages or a small share of the crop. Farm workers find different kinds of work like sowing, planting, harvesting and threshing at different times of the year. They may be employed on daily wages or for a whole year. Farm laborers lead a difficult life. Most of them have loans to repay. There is no job security and payments are much less than the government stipulated 60 rupees per day. With farm machines taking over most of the manual work done in the fields, farm laborers find it increasingly difficult to find jobs. Many of them migrate to other states to find work. Along with land and labor, the third important requirement for farming is the capital or money required for cultivation. We have already seen that modern farming methods require a farmer to spend more on farming. A farmer can earn money only by selling his produce. Small farmers grow just enough crops to feed their families. They are left with little or nothing to sell to arrange for the capital required to grow another crop. Thus, small farmers in Palampur are forced to borrow money from big farmers or local money lenders. Besides paying a high rate of interest, small farmers also have to work as farm laborers for large farmers to repay their loan. The large farmers, on the other hand, produce a lot more than their own requirement. The large farmers in Palampur sell their surplus wheat to traders in Raiganj at a good profit. The large farmers deposit their money in banks or lend it to small farmers. The large farmers also use their surplus profits to acquire new fixed capital assets like farm machinery. The large farmers are also investing money in non-farming activities like transport and shops. Thus, while the rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer in Palampur. Like most villages in India, farming is the main production activity in Palampur. However, one-fourth of the population of Palampur is engaged in non-farming activities like shopkeeping, dairy, manufacturing and transport. Let us learn more about these activities. The moment you get down at Palampur bus stop, you will see small eatery shops and tea stalls set up by people in open spaces outside their houses. Further into the village, you will find some shopkeepers who buy goods from wholesalers in Shapur and sell them in Palampur. You can get all things of daily use like groceries, fruits, and vegetables, toiletries, and stationary items in the shops at Palampur. Meet Karim. He found that a large number of students from Palampur, who attend college at Shahpur, also take computer classes there. So, Karim started a computer training center in his house at Palampur. Karim bought a few computers and hired two computer literate women from the village. Now, a good number of students attend classes at his computer training center. Let us move on to dairy. Several people in Palampur are engaged in dairy activities. Buffaloes in these dairies are fed jawar and bajra 
grown in Palampur itself. Milk from the dairies in Palampur is transported daily to Rai Ganj. Some traders from Shahpur have set up collection centers and chilling plants at Rai Ganj, from where milk is supplied to other towns and cities. Now let us look at manufacturing. When we talk about manufacturing, we immediately think of large factories and production plants in industrial towns and cities. However, in villages like Palampur, manufacturing happens at a much smaller scale using simple and often traditional methods. Several families in Palampur are engaged in small-scale manufacturing activities like making handicrafts, weaving cloth and baskets, and making candles. All members of the family contribute to the manufacturing activity and outside labor is rarely hired. Meet Mishri Lal, the entrepreneur. He has set up an electric sugarcane crushing machine on his field. This machine offers many advantages over the traditional method of crushing sugarcane using bullocks. Mishri Lal buys sugarcane from other farmers in Palampur and makes jaggery from it. He sells the jaggery to traders in Shahpur at a small profit. Coming to transport, Palampur is connected by an all-weather road to Rai Ganj and Shahpur. A number of people in Palampur are engaged in transporting goods and people along this route using a variety of vehicles like cycle rickshaws, tongas, bullock carts, jeeps, tractors and trucks. Here is Kishora, a man of multiple vocations. His is another interesting story. Kishora does not own any land. Till a few years ago, he worked as a farm laborer. The little money he earned was hardly sufficient for his family. Then Kishora took a loan under a government scheme providing loans to landless laborers and bought a buffalo. He now sells dairy products for a living. Kishora also appends a cart to his buffalo and uses it to transport different types of material. Every month, Kishora earns some extra money by transporting all kinds of material from clay for the village potter to jaggery for traders in Shahpur. Kishora's financial condition is much better now. Let us conclude by looking at the table showing the nature of capital and labor used for the production of goods and services in Palampur by Kareem, Mishri Lal and Kishora.